Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and I have the second part of our Grimbjorn painting tutorial for you today, his ferocious and imposing bear form. This is equally as beautiful a sculpt as his human variant, and the texture across the face and the fur has been a genuine pleasure to paint. You can also achieve really amazing results with this model with a fairly simple palette and simple paint application, which I'm super happy to be able to share with you today. Now I'm going to be tackling each element of the model as a whole today, as all the dry brush layers might interfere with other base coated areas as we continue painting. As usual, my model was cleaned, assembled and fixed to the base. It was then primed with Citadel Chaos Black Spray prior to painting. Well, enough jabbering on from me. Brush is ready, guys, and let's get painting. Bare main body. To start with, the entirety of the bear's body was base coated with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of Abaddon Black and Incubi Darnis. Now, as the fur is so well textured, it will be important to apply a few layers to make sure all the recesses in the fur, the nooks and all the crannies have a good, even coverage of paint over the Chaos Black undercoat. It's not entirely crucial to undercoat the bear's face with this mix, but it certainly doesn't hurt if you want a nice uniform finish to work off later on. Once you have a nice solid base coat to the bear's fur, a shade was applied, except this time I'm not using non oil, I'm opting for a wash using some very very thin down pure Abaddon Black. This is to avoid any unsightly blemishes which can occur when you use a shade in such a vast quantity. For me it gives more control over the wash and does a better job turning the fur recesses than non oil would at this stage. Are you ready for the most time consuming part of painting this model? Once my shade was dry and I was happy with the tone of the fur, I went over and individually layered every single strand of fur using pure eshing grey. Now do not be daunted, yes of course a heavy dry brush will work just as well at this stage, however as I'm going to be relying on dry brushing a lot for the further layering and highlighting stages, I wanted to provide some extreme definition at an early stage of the fur. For me it helps give a more natural look to the fur when we get through to the final stages, but again as I said a heavy dry brush of eshing grey would work too if this isn't entirely your cup of tea. Whew. Now that's done, onto the dry brushing. A heavy layer dry brush was applied all over the fur now with a 50-50 mix of Eshing Grey and Storm Vermin fur. The Storm Vermin adds just a very subtle brown hue into the mix which will translate really well through the lighter greys I'll be using in just a moment. building up the layers further by applying a slightly lighter dry brush over top now using pure storm vermin fur. I want to try and keep this lighter than I would normally as I don't want the brown tones of the storm vermin to overwhelm the greys. At this stage also I focus less on the undercarriage and reverse of the legs to help provide some natural shading over the bear's body features. Follow this up now with a lighter dry brush again, this time with a 50-50 mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Administratum Grey. Here I'm highlight dry brushing to start defining the more prominent areas of fur and create movement over his very musculature and well defined furry torso. It's important to go perpendicular to the fur to ensure you get good even coverage over all these areas. Working my way up to yet another lighter dry brush using pure Administratum Grey. Finally, applying a feather light dry brush now with a 2 to 1 mix of Administratum Grey and Ulthran Grey. Keeping this just at the dusting, you'll be just picking out the absolute tips and most raised edges of fur to finish off the bear's main body. Bear face. I'm going to be using some lovely rich browns and yellows to build up the bear's face and create a really lovely blended contrast between this and all of the fur. To start off with, the entire face and inner of both ears was base coated with a three part mix of two parts Mormonfang Brown, one part Rhinox Hide and one part Abaddon Black. The 
This was then given a shade using partially diluted Agrax Earth Shade, being very careful here not to bleed onto the fur lining the face or letting it pool too much in the recesses. Now I'm starting to lay out the facial details and building up the rich brown tones by adding scrag brown to the base coat mix, in an approximate 3 to 1 ratio favouring the base coat mix, leaving the shade showing in all the very well defined and sculpted recesses. I'm going to push the hues and tones more now by adding Baylor Brown into the overall mix. Now I'm focusing on creating the natural movement of the bear's snarling expression by further framing the snout, gaping more and creating more definition over the heavy set scowling brow. Increasing the Baylor Brown in gradual increments, pushing these layers further and tighter until my mix is an approximate 2 to 3 ratio split of the previous layer mix and the Baylor Brown addition. By now, you should start seeing the bear's personality and expression really showing through these layers. For the next few highlight stages, I took a bit of a risky approach and added Dawn Yellow in very small, gradual increments for the final highlight stages. By keeping this addition small and focused and controlling my application properly, I can control how much malice and primal fury is brought through the bear's face. This I'm focusing on framing the outside of the face and the upper most raised areas of facial detail. My mix contained no more than one third approximately of Dawn Yellow by the time I finished highlighting. Finally, a glaze of thoroughly thinned down Reichland flesh shade was applied just to tie all the layers and highlights together. Beautiful and terrifying. Facial details. The nose was carefully picked out using Skaven Black Dinge. This was then given a careful layer over with pure administratum grey, leaving the base coat black mix showing around the edge and in the nostrils. The eye recesses were then carefully picked out using pure Abaddon black. The main body of the eyes was then painted in with scrag brown, leaving the Abaddon black showing around the edges. and a very delicate horizontal line of Abaddon Black painted in to create the pupils. The tongue and gums in the mouth were carefully base coated using Bugman's Glow. A quick layer was then applied using Cadian Flesh Tone. Followed by a quick, targeted highlight with a 2 to 1 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh. carefully picking out all the teeth and all the claws now with a smooth coating of Rackarth Flesh.
These were then all highlighted using pallet bridge flesh to give them some sharpness and to make them really pop. Scenic base. The large rock on the base was carefully base coated with a 50 50 mix of Abaddon Black and Skaven Black Dinge. You'll have to reorientate your model quite a bit to ensure you're able to get all the rocky areas here, being very careful, of course, as you do. The rock was then shaded using Nulm Oil, thinned down with Lamy and Medium. Once this was dry, a careful targeted layering dry brush was applied with pure Skaven Blight Dinge, leaving the shade showing in all the recesses. This was then followed by a further, lighter dry brush again using Dawnstone. Again, being careful not to clip out onto the bear's finished fur if you can avoid it. Finally highlighted with a feather light dry brush with a 50-50 mix of Dawnstone and Administratum Grey. The fallen logs on the base were carefully picked out using drier bark. With the inner cross sections of wood getting picked out with a few thinned down layers of bane blade brown. All the wood was then washed thoroughly using Agrax Surf Shade. The texture of the bark was layered up with a 50 50 mix of dry bark and Gawthor Brown. A very, very light dry brush was then applied over top using pure Gawthor Brown just to pick out the edges and most pronounced texture of the tree bark. The inner areas of the trees were layered up with Carrack Stone leaving the Agrax Earth Shade showing in the recesses. and finally given a highlight using Ushabti Bone just to finish the base off with. The recipe for painting in the sand on the base can be found in our 5 minute bases tutorial playlist. And there we have it the ferocious bear form of Grimbjorn, finished and ready to wreak utter havoc into the lines and armies of Mordor on the tabletop. Definitely a sight that every orc, uruk and goblin should quake in their armour at. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this two part video on Grimbjorn. Please like, subscribe, share and comment as this all helps to promote and push out the content to more avid hobbyists. And until next time guys, take care and happy hobbying.